All right, I'm back for a special video. Villainous me. We're going to take a look at Caldam, the new set coming in January for Magic the Gathering. They did a, a few cards this week because it was Metal Week. They described this set as Vikings meets Metal. Sounds like Eamon Amaroth to me, but, you know, I like them. They're fine. Zach Wild, I don't know. This, this is all metal Vikings to me. So let's take a look at some of the cards that they spoiled. So the first one is the God of Battle. Two white and two. Legendary creature god. Creatures you control are enchanted or equipped. Have double strike. That's pretty good. Beginning of each combat, you may attach target or or in equipment attached to a creature you control to target creature you control. So basically they swap around auras and enchantments. That's pretty good. 4-4 four, for four, 4. And if you can look down at the bottom right here, there's a there's an equipment. And we know from the last set that means it's a flip card. So let's see what's on the other side. Sword of the Realms. Two drop, white and colorless. Legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus two plus oh and has vigilance. Whenever an equipped creature dies, return it to its owner hand. Equipped for a white M1. That seems pretty good, actually. That's really good recursion on your creatures. And plus two in vigilance is pretty good. I'm a fan of the god and the sword of the realm. Let's see what's next. The Realm Eater. Legendary Wolf. Three drop. Green, black, and one. For a 3 3. Whenever permanent an opponent controls is put into the graveyard from the battlefield, put a plus one counter on the realm eater. At the beginning of your upkeep, if it has one or more counters on it, you may remove all of them. If you do, exile each other non land permanent when converted mana cost less than or equal to the number of counters removed this way. I think this card is going to be played in standard. I think it's going to be played in commander. As the commander, it's wolf. It's got a great ability, so I think it's going to see play. Seems good. What's next? Valkyrie Harbinger. Six drop. Flying Cleric, or Angel Cleric. Has flying and life link. At the beginning of each end step, if you gain four or more life this turn, create a 4-4 four, four white angel with flying and vigilance. Seems pretty good. I mean, high end, but seems good, actually. If you can gain four or more life. And I think there's another creature in standard that does similar things, so. Not bad. Armed and armored. White and one, for an instant. Vehicles you control become artifact creatures till end of turn. Choose a dwarf you control. Attach any number of equipment you control to it. At instant speed. So, uh, I think some hammer shenanigans might be going on. We'll see. That seems pretty good, actually. It's terrifying, actually. I, I'm afraid this card's going to be janky fun for everyone. Let's see what's next. Uh, that card. This is a three drop. Human Cleric. Angel spells you cast cost two less to cast for 2 2. Seems pretty good if you're playing Angels. <laughs> Makes the 6 drop we just looked at a 4 drop, so. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. And it's not legendary, so you can have multiple out. I feel like Angels are coming in this set. What's next? War Chanter Scattle. 3 drop. White and 2. Dwarf Cleric. Whenever it becomes tapped, if it's enchanted or equipped, create a 2-1 red dwarf berserk creature token. 2-3. Nice flavored text. Who will be the hero of my tale? Isn't that the question? That seems like a pretty good card for an uncommon. Youthful Valkyrie. One and a white for an angel. Flying. Whenever another angel enters battlefield under your control, put a plus one counter on Youthful Valkyrie. A 1-3. That's pretty good, actually. 
that's not bad. That is, that can get out of control quick. These cards are really good for the first couple of spoilers. Let's see what's next. Ooh, Elementalist. Seven drop, giant wizard. Additional cost, you must reveal a giant card from your hand or pay an extra two. So nine drop or show a giant. When it attacks, you may cast an instant or sorcery from your hand without paying its mana cost. That seems pretty good. That ability seems pretty good. It's a lot to cast him, but that ability is super good. Plus, I feel like everybody's just going to try to cheat him out of the graveyard anyway. So, nice reanimator target. But, wow. That ability. I like that guy. Let's see what's next. Absorb Identity. A blue and one. Return to creature show its owner's hand. You may have shapeshifters. You control become a copy of that creature till end of turn. It's kind of weird. There must be going to be a lot of shapeshifters, but it's kind of a strange card. We'll see how that works. I'm, I'm not really sure. We'll have to see how many shapeshifters. Uh, Giant's Grass. Two blue and two. Enchantment Aura. Enchant Giant you control. When Giant's Grasp enter the battlefield, gain control of target non-land permanent for as long as Giant's Grasp remains on the battlefield. That seems strange. You have to equip, you have to enchant a giant. That's weird. I like the flavored text. Behave and you'll be a fine pet. Bite me. And your ammunition. <laughs> so John's just going to chuck you. <laughs> Seems funny. Strange card, but we'll see. Alright, now we got our red legendary dwarf berserker. Other dwarfs you get, plus one, plus oh. Whenever a dwarf you control becomes tapped, create a treasure token. Sacrifice five treasures, search your library for an artifact or dragon card. Put that card onto the battlefield, then shuffle your library for a 2-1. Seems pretty good in a deck that has dragons or artifacts you want to search out. Yeah, that uh, that is pretty good. I don't know how many dwarfs are in standard, but I feel like there's going to be a lot coming in this set. So we'll see how this one is. Uh, this is the alternate version. This is how the showcases are going to be. I kind of like it. It's cool looking. Certland Flinger. Three, four, five drop. Two red and three for a goblin berserker. When he attacks, you may sack another creature. When you do, he deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to any target. If you sacrifice a creature that was a giant, he deals twice that much damage instead. That seems crazy. Um, fling on a creature. A giant at that. Uh, that seems wow. Wow, that seemed something. Uh, bearded Axe. Red and two. Equipped creature gets plus one, plus one for each dwarf equipment and or vehicle you control. Equips for two. Seems like that could be pretty good. We will see. Again, don't know how many dwarfs and equipments and vehicles, but uncommon. Giant, Fire Giant's Fury. Red and one. Target giant you control gets plus two, plus two, and gains trample until end of turn. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, exile that many cards from the top of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those cards. Seems seems good for two mana. Uh, I'll probably see play. Uh, Gilded Assault Cart. Three, two red, and one. Trample, 5-1. Cruise for 2. Sack 2 treasures, return it from your graveyard to your hand. Um, I don't know. That might see play. Uh, cruise for 2. That's not bad, but I don't know. We'll see. Realm Walker. A re uh, blue. Uh, <laughs> nope, not even close to those colors. A green and 2. It's a changeling and a shapeshifter. Changelings are back, apparently. When it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may cast creature spells of the chosen type from the top of your library. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, considering we've seen dwarves and 
Giants, and I'm, don't remember what else, but seems pretty good. It's going to see play in Tribal Commander decks, too, I'm sure. Uh, Canopy Tactician, a green and three. Oh, look, now we got elves. Elf Warrior, other elves get plus one, plus one. Tap it to add three green to your mana pool. Three, three. That's pretty good. I mean, it's not bad. It buffs your elves and it gives you three mana. Seems good. Elven Ambush. A green and three. Create a 1-1 one, one green elf warrior creature token for each elf you control. Well, if you got a lot of elves, that is going to be an ambush. <laughs> that seems interesting. Uh, this is the regular version of the Glade Walker Ritualist. Oh no, this is a new one. I'm sorry. Green and two for another changeling. Whenever another creature named Glade Walker Ritualist enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. So it pays to have multiple. 3-3 three, three for 3. Not bad. And what about that flavor text? We are all. That's all the flavor text. We are all. We are all team me. Alright, next card. This is the other version of the round walker that we saw earlier. This is the alternate version. I think that might be the buy box promo too. Oh, look at this. Here's Kaya. Five drop. Three, one white, one black for legendary planeswalker. Put a ghost form counter on up to one target non-token creature. It gains whenever this creature dies or is put to exile, return it to its owner's hand and create a 1-1 white spirit token with fly. That's her plus one. Negative three is exile target non-land permanent. Negative seven, you get an emblem. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may cast a legendary spell from your hand, from your graveyard, or among cards you own in exile without paying its mana cost. And she starts at five. So it, it only takes two turns to get her ultimate. She seems good. I feel like uh, the control decks are going to want to play her. The, that's wonderful. Super good. Uh, Rampage of the Valkyries. Five. White, black, and three. Enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, create a 4-4 white angel token with flying and vigilance. Whenever an angel you control dies, each player sacks a creature. It's not bad. I mean, it's, it's pretty good. As long as you're playing angels. Which, apparently, this set is going to have angels, so that's good. I hear the Kalia players cheering now. Let's look at the next one. Pyre of Heroes. Two for an artifact. Tap two, sack a creature. Search your library for a creature that shares a creature type with the sacrificed creature and has converted mana cost equal to one plus that creature's converted mana cost. Put that card on the battlefield, then shuffle your library. Activate this ability only when you can cast a sorcery. So, yeah, that's um, kind of like a tribal birthing pod. Not bad. This seems like a tribal set, so this this actually might be pretty good. We'll see. I'm sure it's going to be played in tribal commanders. Seems good. Alright, so now we got the triumphs. Or, the triumphs. The flip lands. Uh, they have the last four. So, you can see this is the green-blue one. I've only got one side, but this is green on one side, blue on the other. The picture is wonderful. These are extended arts. Uh, the next one is the black-red one. I, I really like the art in this picture, but it's nice. The next one is the black-green one. The art in this picture is actually pretty good, too. I really like the full art on these. It looks really good. And then we have the white-blue one. Not really sure what's going on with this art, but it's pretty cool looking. So these were the spoilers we got. Um, there was a lot of them. This set seems like it's going to be fun. I think it'll be fun. We'll see. But uh, thanks for joining.
I'll do another video if they drop more spoilers. Tomorrow, I'll do Friday Night Magic, so check it out. It'll probably be early, so it's more like Friday morning magic for me, but it's fine. I'll post the video tomorrow. Everyone, just take care of yourself and make sure you're sharing the kindness with everyone. Everybody, enjoy the rest of your night.